Hello everybody. This video is about a tool bag setup. This is what you need to have to do basic carpentry tasks. This is something that is just a bare bones basic that I think that everybody should have if they want to be a homeowner or if they want to be started in the trades or anything like that. This is a breakdown of what these things are. First thing we're going to start with is going to be on the right hand side and then we're going to work our way to the left. This right here is where I keep majority of all my hand tools is what this is used for. First thing we're going to start off with is a tape measure. A tape measure is very valuable to you. For me, I like a good 35 foot. The reason why I go with 35 feet is because of the fact that it's long enough to do with what you need it to do. And the general rule of thumb is when it comes to tape measures is don't go past that rating of what it says by five feet. So if it's a 35 foot, you wouldn't go past 30 foot. That's a general rule. It doesn't mean you can or shouldn't or anything like that. It's just that's the way and how I've always thought. The tape measure, number one. Number two. Utility knives. I have this one set up to have a straight blade in. This one right here I have set up for a hook blade. This is the old Stanley 299. And yes, I know some people are going to be like, well, it doesn't retract. Well, you know what? I've had this. I've beat this up. This has been a good blade. Good bladed knife for me. Good utility knife for me. I believe that it is one of the best that I've had, and it works for me, and it doesn't cut my pockets here or nothing. And next would be a speed square. You always want a speed square, and the general rule would be somewhere around 7 inches. 7 inches is a good for your speed square. You, It's important to have everything be square, and it's important to have everything to be level and square. That is very important to have that. Next item. Tin snips. Tin snips to me are extremely important because of the fact that if you're going to be doing like cutting drip hedge or banding or anything like that, you need to have, or even just with shingles too, trimming out with shingles. These are a very important thing to have. Next item, 16 and 1. 16 and 1, 11 and 1. Mu good multi function, one of these. These things are incredible. You can scrape with them. You can scrape. You can pry. You can gouge. You can do numerous things with these things. These things are amazing. And what I use this for in particular is in, conduct, is in conjunction with my hammer to provide a surface that it's not going to mar anything. And I also use this to pull off trim. The next item, a chalk line, chalk box, chalk line. This is a very important thing to have because of the fact that I believe in having red and blue. Some people will sit there and say, well, what about the other colors? You know, every job is different. Every job is different on everything. But I believe blue and red. Blue is going to be the chalk that is going to be a temporary chalk that you will be using the most of. And then you need to have that red because that red will make them more permanent to more permanent. Then, next would be a good screwdriver. Six and one screwdriver. This has Phillips number one, and it has three sixteenths flat on this side, quarter inch nut driver right there. And then on this side, it has a Phillips number two, with a quarter inch flathead 
and a 5 16 nut driver. I use these. This is a very useful tool. I love this tool. This tool is absolutely amazing to me. And you can pick them up relatively cheap. I've got them as low as like a dollar at like Harbor Freight or two dollars at Harbor Freight. They're not that expensive. The next item I keep is a paint can opener. I use this as a small pry bar if I need something to be pried. If it's more than the flat head can do, then I use this. And this can also be used to open up paint cans, which I know the 16-in-1 is good at. But that's not what I'm using it for. I use it for multiple things. Next, driver bits. I have these right here. These would be my Makita's. Makita Gold. And there's three different types of styles. This has number two, number two Robertson, number two Phillips, T25. I do a little bit of deck building too. I keep bits in there at all times for the screw guns. Next item. And I will do a later in depth video. This is just the basics of what you need to have to get started. This right here is your cat's paw, bear claw, cat's paw. This is good for removing nails that are in wood. This is a very good item for that. And also I want to point out too that, the, that whenever you're doing this, this can also dictate, the tools go where you dictate of what the job that you're doing is. If I'm doing drywall, this is going to be set up doing different. If I'm going to be doing Roofing, this is going to be set up doing different. If I'm going to be framing, it's going to be set up doing different. It all depends on what you are doing. The next item is a good 15-inch flat bar. Flat bar, wonder bar, whatever you want to call it. This is a very good demolition tool. I love this tool. And like I said, I will go in more detail later on on what the purposes behind these tools. Is that it? That is it. Okay. Next item. A good hammer. A good hammer. And this right here, I would say 16 to 20 ounces is good for generalized construction. It's light enough to do trim work, but also heavy enough to sink in a 3 inch uh, 16 penny nail. This is about the size that I use, and I know that they go up in size, more so in size. I do understand, and I do know that. But I just wanted to start off with just this. This is your bare bones basic setup that you would need to have. Then right here on this, I always keep another chalk box. Another chalk box is good for, like I said, this is my red. The other one I showed you is my blue. I keep two of these on me because you never know with what you're going to be doing with anything. And this is very important to have these two. Now moving along to the left hand side, this is where I keep my fasteners. Electrical tape. Electrical tape is very good to make a very small repair on anything. And it can even provide a grip. If you need to, you can use this in conjunction with a tool like this, and you could put you could wrap this around it and you can get more out of it because of that. Or if you get a cut. I know it's not very sterile, but at least it would stitch you enough to so that way you can get some band-aids or get some gauze on there. The next item I carry in here, a pencil. You always need to have a good sharp pencil. And with conjunction with the pencil, 
you need to have a way to sharpen it. And this is a more quicker way. I've had it before to where I've stood there and I waited on people to sharpen their pencil with the utility knife, which is not the wrong way of doing it. They stood there forever and did it. Versus you do this, versus you put it in here, put it in here, a few quick turns, a few quick turns, and boom, you have a sharp pencil. It's a very useful thing. Next, hearing protection. You always need to be having hearing protection with you and on you. Always need it. That's just a given. And going down from here would be my, this right here would be used for my least common size fasteners. Not that they're not important, they're just not as oftenly used. I have aluminum nails for doing siding that are in here. Safety glasses. Getting into the bigger pocket. The bigger pocket is what I primarily use for, this is what I primarily use when I need to have more fasteners. This is where I keep my racks of nails. This is where I keep my coils of nails. This is where I keep those things. And in, in here lives a nipper. Nail puller. This is very useful for if a you have a stubborn nail that needs to come out and there's no other way to get it out. You've tried your cat's paw, you tried your flat bar, you tried your hammer, and it won't come. So you use your nippers. And then I have this set up to do roofing right now. But these are would be common. And like I said, I would have, and these, I have a loose amount of these because of the fact that if I need to start doing it by hand and, and if the gun jams, I can keep rolling. And then I have these, which are usually, this is for if you have a piece of tar paper that comes flying up and you need to tack it down right away to keep it from going anywhere. The next item over here would be my second most commonly used. This would be for if I need to have, if I need to use these 16 penny nails for either framing or I can use the duplex for a temporary hold for if I had to put toenails in on the side of a roof. That would be a two by four that'd be on its side or for jacks or anything like that. And then this pouch right here, I use as my fastener discard pile. This would be used for any of my fasteners that aren't being used. And in grand total, you have this nice belt. This is the way how I've customized mine. I know some people have occidental leathers and everything else. But for what I do, this is, serves me well, and I like it. And I ha even have suspenders on them to help keep everything together and in line. And I want to briefly go back to this pouch. I have three options to put a hammer in. I have three options that I can put my hammer in. And I like having options. Sometimes I need it in the front, sometimes I need it in the back. It all depends on what you're doing and how you're doing it. Now, is this the end-all to end-all toolkit? Absolutely not. The way on how, like I said before, if I was doing things different, I would set them up differently. It all depends on what you're doing. But this is just a good overlay. This is a general rule type of kit that I would say you need to have. There's going to be more of these videos here to come. But this is just to get you started. Alrighty. Thank you for your time.